the Long Island Tea Podcast. I can't believe Three it. Three years strong. Three years strong. We yes. start every episode with saying, how you doing? How, how you doing? doing? How you doing? <laughs> how you doing? We're at the Gurney's Seawater Spa. We're at the incredible Ohiki Castle. We are on the beautiful Shelter Island. At the Selfie Clubhouse. I mean, when do you get the chance to right. have Adventureland right. yourself? A taste of Long Island. We have Besito. Hi, neighbors. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Welcome back to the Long Island Tea, where we spill the tea on living your best Long Island life. I'm Kristen. And I'm Sharon. Welcome back. It's been a busy week, Sharon. Yes. almost said Sharon Bear, but I was like, no, Char, Char. <laughs> um, okay, so like, we have a very busy show today. We do. Because we have a special guest. Um, so I would just kick it off by saying, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, it's been so crazy this week. I feel like I know we say this every, every week. week. But Honestly, so since we have spoken, yes, last week where I like dominated for all my like personal drama. Um, this week has all been about work, 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 work. Yeah. I <laughs> love it. We had our annual meeting and legislative breakfast, which was so unbelievable. It was awesome. Attended, uh, awesome. attended. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. So great. We had like 150 people there, elected officials, partners, where we got to actually uh, take the time to tell people what we do. Yeah, and how we do it and why, why we, we do, do it. it exactly and the results of what we do yeah. and how what a destination marketing organization is and how we differ from just an average ad agency right. and how we measure and um how we strategize and how we're data driven it was awesome it was awesome and the, funny enough like we had a meeting this morning and we're talking about how how many people are reaching out to us regarding like the data that we were talking yeah, about like they were hey, like can, can we, we get, get a, a copy, copy? <laughs> <laughs> can we get that study you were yeah. talking about can we do this can we do that which uh, so many it Again, it's amazing. We've been Discover Long Island now for over eight years. Right? And we rebranded, and it and but people still don't always know what we do. Right, and so much of it, you know, they see our social media or they see the podcast and they're like, "Oh, that looks fun." Yeah, and it is, but they don't see the strategy, right? The the hard work, the measurement, the reporting, everything that goes yeah. behind the scenes. So yeah. it was, I loved it. It was awesome to be able to share that. I know, and the team killed it. it That's. Did. Again, even with that event, we make it look easy. Yeah. Not easy. Not easy. I'll tell you. I mean, we say it all the time. Our team is amazing. But like like you said, you make totally. it look easy. Like, because it's just everything goes by so smoothly. I mean, no one will ever know that, you know, something goes awry if it does. You know, like, it's just everybody's so great. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Sharon, you did the the luxury thing I've been asking you to do. The luxury thing, like putting our beautiful new letters in our new conference room. Yeah, I wanted to like put some signs up, mm -hmm. and it's you know we put up the words hustle and heart, hustle and heart, and that's, that's what exactly about. what our team lives by every day, and yeah. I love it. I mean, it's really amazing to me what our team accomplishes, and it's because every single person we actually we care so much. I know. And I don't know a lot of organizations that are like that. I know. Where every member of the team like really cares. And people ask me all the time, how do you lead? How do you do that? What do you, what's your leadership style? Like, how do you get your mm -hmm. team? How do you build teams like this? I'm like, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I feel like I just get lucky because this team, people care so much about delivering, representing the organization and, and like then this week, right. our team has been at Grand Central Terminal, Grand Central Madison, which is the Long Island Railroad concourse of Grand Central Terminal in New York City all week doing this wonderful activation. It was amazing. I went um, earlier in the week and I just had the best time. I haven't had that fun, much fun and I don't know how long. Yeah, that's <laughs> you amazing. You know, like we were just dancing and jumping around and, you know, hackling the customers or <laughs> the commuters, but in a good way, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, having a good time, having a good time, representing like communicating, Long Island. you know, what, what we do and why we do it. It's just, yeah. It's and awesome. I, I heard from so many people, so many people are texting me. I just saw Discover Long Island. I just, I was walking by the, oh my God, I just saw your people there. Mm -hmm. awesome. And I'm like, I'll be there on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited to go tomorrow. Yeah. It'll, uh, it will be done by the time this airs, but I mean, 70,000 commuters a day, a day. And I think that's just a rough estimate because of the, some, um, someone was saying the morning, um, uh, the rush, the morning rush, 
it was so crowded that you couldn't even see our booth. You couldn't oh even see our gosh. people, like just that much, that many people. And it's so coming awesome because we're promoting our new app, Discover Long Island mobile app. If mm-hmm. you have not downloaded it, go to your Apple or Google Play and get Discover Long Island. And it tells you all the things to do on Long Island, wherever you're located yeah, around awesome. the island. So it pulls like things near you. So you don't have to know which town you're in or which county you're in. It just pulls all the wonderful small businesses near you. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, so people that coming through, if you downloaded our app, you were entered to win a Gurney's overnight stay. Amazing. Right. And people were like, so our downloads are up over a thousand percent. It's insane. And it's like, oh, that was on Wednesday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I just, you know, back to the team a little bit. I love, I love the recaps we're getting every yeah. night. Like it was awesome. The whole team is awesome. And, um, we took 50 cases of our inspiration guides um, in hopes. And I was like, listen, we're just not going to bring them back. Like, just make sure we don't, we're not going to schlub we're, them back. No. And we, we had to send 75 more yeah. on Wednesday. Insane. Already gone through it. All of our postcards that with the downloadable app sold out, we had to print more That's like rush, them rush through. Order. It was awesome. Exceeded our expectations. Yeah. Wild. Huge. Thanks to the MTI though, because totally. the way that they helped uh, make this activation happen and the way that they guided us through everything. I mean, it was a bumpy start with finding out what needed to be, you know, yeah. permitted first and things time, like that. It was that. the first activation they're doing in this area. And we're like the guinea pigs. But and, and it was the first time we were doing something right, exactly. like this. Exactly. Just for finding them. out. So, yeah, they were awesome. And they're so like, we love them. We, you know, shoot them a text during the day. Hey, is this OK? And they're like run down and talk to us or whatever. It was just, it was really awesome. We have always been great partners of the Long Island Railroad Mm -hmm. that comes right through. It's so cool that we have this artery through Long Island where it's, you know, known as a commuter rail, but you can take it and get off the LIE, get off the roads. Yeah. You can take the Long Island Railroad anywhere across Long Island, yeah. which is awesome. And straight into Penn Station and now straight into Grand Central. Amazing. I'll be there tomorrow. Uh, Kenzie's going with me because, you know, uh, Kenzie came to town for spring break mm-hmm. and Penelope was here too for right. like 48 hours. Right. So for 48 hours, we had a full house over the weekend and it was so fun and I've loved having it. And Thomas was like, I'm one of the nights I can't remember. He's like, man, I cannot believe you were able to sleep last night. There was so much hooting and hollering and screaming going on in our living room. I'm like, I slept like a baby. That's amazing. Uh, Having all the kids there. Yeah. It's like the one time I'm not worrying. Right. Right. Waking up and wondering. <laughs> Having yeah. them screaming and laughing and playing video games or whatever. Yeah. A hundred percent. Is the it's the best thing ever. I was like, this is this is where I'm happy. This is my happy place. Aww. So it was really awesome. Um and Kenzie and I, I took a like a PTO day yesterday and took a Stacy uh, recommendation from our team because she was saying a couple weeks ago or last week, she took a PTO day and went to Greenwich, Connecticut mm-hmm. and just like went shopping with her daughter and her daughter's friend and like her friend or something like that so she's like it's just a great day that all the shops are there cute places to eat i'm like it's an hour and a half drive it's literally right on the other side of new york city oh so you didn't ferry no oh it would have taken longer to ferry because if you take the ferry it would have been another 40 minutes so you just it's an hour and a half door to door wow and um plus yesterday it was raining thank god i didn't ferry that's right so cute. Aw. Have you ever done this? No. Oh, my God. And this is one of the great things about living on Long Island. We're like, oh, we're just going to go to Greenwich, Connecticut for the day. And, oh, my God, I did a thing. Which is Sharon. <laughs> Bougie shops. I was going to ask what kind of shops are there. So uh, you went to Louis Vuitton. No. No, no, no. <laughs> but, you know, it's a good mix. It's just one, like, street. We had a great, we went to a place called the East End for oh. lunch, which is funny. I was, like, feeling like I was on Long Island. Um, but they had, like, really cute... Um, boutiques okay. that had unique stuff there, which I loved. And then they had like Airy, which she loved and they have Lululemon and they have, they have Tiffany's, they have like, okay. but um, they have the real, real, mm. the real, real is a website, right? Where the people resell and it's guaranteed oh, to okay. be authentic, mm-hmm. but they have a store you can go shop and Get like touch out. everything. I was like, shun now. I was like, <laughs> and even like, let's be honest, even with the real, real, I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> I can't afford that. Um, but I was walking, but we were just about to leave. And then I walked by and I'm like, there's a store that I have been, there's something I've been wanting for a long time. And I should have just gotten in my car. But have you ever heard of Bowl and Branch? No. Have you heard this, Michael? Bowl and Branch? It's B-O-L-L and Branch. Okay. Well, you've got to put this on our TikTok because they sponsor all these podcasts, Bowl and Branch. Mm-hmm. They're luxury linens. Okay. Sheets. Okay. All organic. 
amazing soft. They get better with like wash. Every wash, yeah. Oh my God. I walked in and they just, I was like, Kenzie, this is, they had the examples and it was pouring rain. So we were the only people in the whole store. Oh, that's awesome. And the service was fabulous. So yes, I bought, they have a brand new, the vintage wash out, which is so soft. And they were all like, oh my God, we just made the bed with this up here. We just got these in this week. We all want them. And so I bought them. And you know what I love about it? You know how you know it's good? So A, they're all beautiful. They're all like in these satin bows and they're gorgeous colors. And they're all like already, like Packaged, the set's already yeah. there. And they're the, I love the store. Very aesthetic. Mm-hmm. And then they take it and then they like wrap it in the paper with a beautiful sticker. <gasps> And then that goes into like a box that covers it with a satin bow. And then the box goes into a bag. I'm like, all the packaging. Yes. All all about the packaging. (laughs) And uh, I was like, so I did a thing and bought like super luxurious posh sheets. But if you're going to buy something. Yeah. You might as well invest in something. Yes, exactly. Um, so I have to say, I like crunchy sheets, not crunchy sheets. Whoa. I don't even know. Like, (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> like you know what I'm talking about like stiff this is not getting better <laughs> okay I, I no we're like, learning a lot about you know, this is like, some tea. what is that it's like it's just cotton yeah I don't know how you would I don't know an appropriate way to explain but but not soft the opposite right. of soft right really yeah like um I don't why I don't know, especially when they're cold, like when you get. Well, that's what she did say because uh, I asked her about like sheets that keep you cool, and she did say that by the way, you often ha- have to sacrifice the softness for the ones that are like anti sweat or right, whatever. And right. I'm like, no, I'll you just like sweat. The soft, yeah, yeah. I love getting into a bed that feels like a cloud. Yeah, it's amazing. It's my thing. It's mm. my thing. So, um, Bowl and Branch, that was so fun. We had a great time, and then we had to drive home in like crazy rain. I was white knuckling it. Oh, oh my God. Were you in like driving through the shower? Rush at 100%. Timed it like not even. Yeah, couldn't have have been better. Couldn't have been (laughs) more stupid. And you know it. You're like, we're in the city. I'm like, literally, I'm going to go ahead and drive through New York City at five o'clock. Yeah. um, I'm going to come out to Long Island. So it took us an hour and a half to get there. It took us two and a half hours to get back. But it was totally fun. I love it. I I love love it. All the day trips. Yeah, that's fun. And Kenzie was saying, kind of like our interview, she was like, why, if you could, if you can live on Long Island, why wouldn't you live anywhere else? Which is Connecticut to the day. We, we're going to be in Manhattan on Friday. Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. For this it, like grand central, you can go anywhere. It's awesome. Um, and you know, who knows how great, um, Long Island is, mm-hmm. is our very own Long Island, very famous and accomplished DJ Lisa Glassberg. And she's on uh, the show today. So you want to bring her on and hear what she has yeah, to say? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's bring on Lisa G. Okay. Sharon with us is our very special guest, Lisa Glassberg. I know her as the famous Lisa G. (laughs) So Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you. I am such a fan of what you ladies do and growing up in Long Island. And so I am very proud to be a part of your podcast. I just have like the total chills because... Uh, when we heard Lisa G was a hot tea, I'm like, what? <laughs> we need her on our show. Oh, yeah. We love her. Um, I mean, I've been listening to you. I, 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 You have a very um, prestigious career that is ongoing, and we'll talk about that. But I got to know you when, of course, you were working with Howard Stern, Lisa G. So mm-hmm, right. uh, tell us a little bit about your background and and what how you kind of came up in the ranks and what you're doing these days. Oh, well, let's see. I started in radio on Long Island when I went to Hofstra University, and they were really great in working with me. And um, then just like things, I worked up the ladder and ended up at uh, Sirius XM. I worked for 10 years with Howard Stern. And I I have to give a lot of credit to Hofstra University. Um, They were really great in working with me with my schedule. So um, I could go to school in the morning and then work in the afternoon. So Big, uh, big props to Hofstra. Yeah, but yeah. that must have been, I mean, everybody wants to work with Howard. So how did you get that opportunity? <laughs> right? How did you break in? Well, I was finishing up some freelance projects and um, they called one day and they said, you know, he's starting this news team. Would you like to work for him? And I said, yeah, it, it um, almost felt like I had won the lottery and I was going to work for the Yankees, if that yes. makes sense. hundred yeah. percent. That's how I would feel. <laughs> right, exactly. 
I mean, you were. I'm a huge Howard fan. I'm one of the people that actually went to Sir. It, back, back then, it was was it XM or Sirius. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, to to be a to to be a subscriber of his uh, for for the reason of him. But you covered entertainment for him primarily, right? I did just about like every red carpet, <laughs> every celebrity that came up there. It was a lot of work and a lot of fun, but um, you really had to bring your A game every mm-hmm. day. Like people don't realize, like you had to work very, very hard. Yeah. But it sure. um, it was so worthwhile just um, working with people at a certain level every day. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, it's like playing tennis when you play with someone better you get better, your game gets better. Right, and you're currently a news anchor and reporter for iHeart Radio News Network. But you know, I have to ask you, like the Oscars are this weekend. Do you miss that? Do you miss being that entertainment reporter? That's a good question. Sometimes I do, but the red carpet, I don't know if you really realize this, has become somewhat of a sport. Mm-hmm. When I started out, red carpets weren't a mile long. Now, every TV station, every cable station, every podcast, every social media influencer has a spot on these carpets. And I remember once when I was working on the Stern Show, not only was I not on the red carpet, I was on the carpet outside of the tent. That's how many people were there. Yeah. And so... um, When it comes to that, I don't miss it. I miss talking to celebrities because I think they all have interesting stories. And I think the key to success when you're on a red carpet or talking to celebrities is really just dealing with them as people, right? And because they all came from somewhere. Like even when I worked with Howard Stern, I never looked at him as a celebrity. I looked at him as, you know, Howard from Long Island, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. they all come from somewhere. And so I think if you go into it with that, uh, like empathy and um, that knowledge about maybe where they grew up, the tough things they went through, you are going to ask a better question than the person standing next to you. Mm -hmm. That's really the key. And, you know, you're hosting a podcast. It's the same thing. It's like, if you come in with um, a sense of like, yeah, I, I, I get you. I know what you're all about. They're not going to have their walls up right. when there's when they speak to you. I just have a quick question for you. This is a question that, you know, I was reading your bio and you started out in Hot 97, um, which is a hip hop station in New York City, right? Yeah. So let's see. So I went to Hofstra. I start to uh, first I interned at WLIR in Garden City. Then mm-hmm. I went to Hofstra. Then I worked at WBAB during my time at Hofstra. Um, I worked in Chicago for a little bit, came back to New York. And then I was working at Hot 97 before it turned hip hop. OK, I was going to so, say that was some um, transition. From yeah. Hot and so they Sharon loves hip hop, by the way. Ken. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So you'll 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 like this story. It's a great story. So we flipped formats. And um, the old program director saw me in a certain way, which I think this happens to many women. They just see you in a certain light. This is the way you look. This is the way you talk. And this is what you're going to be doing. Mm. And then it took this new program, program director to say to me, I think you're funny. I'm promoting you. And I'm bringing in these two guys from MTV, Ed Lover and Dr. Dre. <laughs> Teach them a little something about radio. Because oh, wow. I, I was a radio baby. I started when I was 17. Right. And so the rest is history. And what I tell people is sometimes the key to success is not having a plan. We do that all the time here at yeah. Discover Long Island. We just, we, we're like, we, we call it ready, fire, aim. Yeah. Throwing darts. You know, <laughs> Whatever just, right, works. we had, I mean, radio today is very formatic. You have to play a song at this time. You have Mm -hmm. to say this, Mm -hmm. then you have to say that, right? And Mm -hmm. when we were thrown together, we just had fun and we were ourselves. And speaking to New York and talking to our audience the way we would want to be spoken to, because no one was really talking to the urban youth of New York City, of the five boroughs. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Ed was from Queens, Dre was from Long Island, I'm from Long Island. And we just kind of just talked about our lives, our differences, um, growing up, 
uh, music. Uh, and we really opened our doors to every type of musician, artist, actor who wanted to come up and just hang with us. Awesome. And so that's a really great rule of business, even though it's just talking about it, it sounds like you're throwing out the rules of business. You know what I yeah, mean? It's yeah. counterintuitive. Well, leading, with your heart, to, you know, leading with your heart and, and connecting emotionally with people, especially these days, I feel like. Right? Yeah, everything, you know, has a plan and, you know, a spreadsheet and Excel and like, and we, we had nothing. We yeah. had nothing. We had ourselves. We had our sense of humor. We made each other laugh. And that was about our differences, our similarities, um, and it really just clicked with the audience. And so that really is a great business lesson. Well, I think that's kind of what we do. We just yeah. come in and we talk and we just wing it. We're we like, oh, we it. have no idea what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> I mean, we do have kind of an outline and overview like we know, but so I just want to say, cause in case people don't realize Lisa G and do you, do you care if people call you Lisa G's too, or do you, do you... Uh, people call me Lisa G as if like the G's attached to the A? Uh, yeah. I mean, my real yeah. last name is Glassberg, but I, I just use it to sign checks really. <laughs> yeah. Lisa G. Cause Lisa G is like an, a, a totally, a, a totally award-winning, yeah. like she's accomplished. Billboard Air Personality of the Year Award, New York Metro Air Radio Award, the Gracie Award for Best Local Radio Host. And you were inducted to Hofstra's University Radio Hall of Fame. That's amazing. So I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm telling you. you right now, Lisa. I think have you have you yet to be inducted in the Long Island Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame? No. Okay. All right. Sherry and I are working on this. Working on that. Oh wow, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I'd love that because uh, I know they have a Billy Joel exhibit, yes, right? Yeah. yeah, they have a Billy Joel you know, exhibit. Yep. It is really amazing how many people. Famous people, like mega famous people, are from Long Island. Well, that's what like, I was going to ask you. Like, it's crazy, especially in the music business. Yeah, and, I mean, of, of all business, entertainment, comedians, crazy. What do you think is the secret sauce, as we like to say? <laughs> that's a great question. I think because we're the backyard of Manhattan, and I know growing up in the five towns mm -hmm. in Nassau mm -hmm. County, <laughs> uh, I knew that it was just a stone throw away from where I was. And if I was really great, I could get there. Mm -hmm. It's similar yeah. to the yellow brick road. Like, wow, it was just, you know, a train ride away. And if I really worked at my craft, I could get there. And maybe that's the way, you know, other Mariah Carey felt or, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, Billy Joel. It's crazy. Like so many people. So many people. We were just, uh, our team uh, was at Grand, it's at Grand Central all week because the new Grand Central Madison connection uh, with Long Island Railroad. So we're there doing a whole activation and we were playing Ashanti and uh, our social media director, like, you know, tagged Ashanti and she reposted it because yeah. Ashanti's from Long Island. And then uh, everybody were asking everybody, do you know what town Ashanti's from on Long Island? And people <laughs> were just saying, it's just really, to me being a transplant, it's amazing how much talent comes from here. And I was telling Sharon, I was listening to Smartless podcast and Natalie Portman was talking mm -hmm. about, her, you know, being a Long Islander and her first movie was like this amazing movie. And she's just like, yeah, I just got an agent and it just mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. And Idina Menzel. Yeah. I mean, ama like the most beautiful voices. Yes. Like it, it's, it's incredible to me. It I really think, is. I think it's uh, something's in the water. Yeah. That's it's that like salt say. air. It's that salt, <laughs> that salt air that yeah. we have in the ocean. Well, movie interesting you talked about something in the water so just recently uh there hasn't been very good news mm -hmm. <laughs> about long island and homicides okay we'll leave it at that and i i go around going i'm apologizing for my brethren on long island i just you know i'm very attached speaking of what's in the or, water i know yeah it's crazy no that's true and you know what but listen what the number one thing people listen to these days are crime you know crime true podcast. crime so yeah. we should just transition uh this into a true crime pro podcast and tell them oh. what's going on it's great it's wild i know the you know gilgo beach yeah. and uh, you know so uh, with the good i guess comes the bad but there's so much good like long island yeah. is a very special place like people say um you know come on down to the jersey shore and I go, oh, I love the Jersey Shore, but I love the Hamptons. Like, <laughs> right. they think I'm crazy. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, it, it's it's different. I love the way farmland goes up against the ocean. And it's such a special place, the South Fork, the North Fork. I mean, so many different nooks and crannies. I feel like I know every back street, every 
exit off of the LIE, you know, I, you I really used to know all lost. the Long Island Railroad stops, you know, yeah. uh, Green Acres Mall. I used to, you know, I grew up there. Mm -hmm. And it really is a community because I remember seeing this interview with Rosie O'Donnell and Mariah Carey, and they're making fun of it. Like Mariah Carey doesn't know where it's going. And Rosie's like, I used to see you at the bus stop. Remember the street and it would go down. And once you meet, when you find some another Long Islander, you want to talk about what your connection is and which town you're from and which school. And do you know this person? Right, exactly. <laughs> which shore? Six it's, it's funny, yeah. right? This this community, this connection that we have. Yeah, you never lose it. I'm very proud of being a part of it. Um, I just had a mini high school reunion with men and women that I grew up with. And in a nanosecond, we were right back to where we were. I mean, it's Aww. a very strong connection. Uh, so I came back home and I said, is my Long Island accent back? Because I was hanging out with a lot Aww. of people I grew up with. I think it came back. But, um, you know, it's all in jest and uh, a very special place to grow up. So, Lisa, I have a, you're, you're this accomplished um, radio, you know, broadcast news person, entertainment. Uh, I love the Us Weekly connection. All of it is amazing. Um, but political news, all of it. So I have to ask, because I kind of know what Howard's uh, thoughts are on podcasts. What do you think about the current industry? What's happening with the industry? The fact that everybody and their brother has a podcast. What do you see as the future? Oh, that's a great question. Mm. Well, I think it's going to continue as is. Um, look, there are many podcasts that don't have many listeners. <laughs> and there are some like the Kelsey brothers that I so enjoy listening to. Um, back in the day, you had to keep people listening for four hours, not for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that is a major skill set that I would say many podcasters don't have. Mm -hmm. But you can't put the old rules with the new regime, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now it's about keeping people tuned in for 45 minutes, an hour, and having them come back. And that's monetized in a different way than a four-hour morning radio show. Mm -hmm. But when I think of... You know, when I was a co-host of a morning show, having to keep people tuned in for four hours and keeping them entertained, not once a week, but every day, five days a week, new material, being prepared. Like I um, teach students at Montclair State University and I say to them, if you if your show starts at 9 a.m. and you get in at 8.59, you are not prepared. Right. right? Right. On time and radio means you're late. That means you're not prepared. Right. But the, the I think the other skill set in radio and I love listening to like all, still the radio and I'm a big serious XM fan. So love everything, you, you know, the people are doing there. But I think it's it's being prepared, but making people feel like it's off the cuff and authentic. Yeah. And that's even more difficult to not sound prepared. Yes. I mean, you uh, can have a list. Uh, you have a list of ideas. And then you kind of riff off of it, like a great comedian. They do the same thing. They kind of know what their set list is going to be, even with a musician. They know what the set list is, but one night they play it in a different key or they jam out in a different section. So it's the same thing with radio. But you need a gazillion ideas mm -hmm. for a radio show five days a week. It's not a podcast that's yeah, over yeah. in 45 minutes. Yeah, It's a true crowd. I think, I think one, you know, it is a true craft. It's like you have to have so much information and be on point. Like we mess up some things all the time. And I'm like, ch fact check that, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But like in, on radio, I feel like you, people that, are tuning. And that's why I love Howard Stern so much is because it is really, he's the master. But, mm -hmm. you know, radio is an art. And, and how wonderful with, you know, maybe podcasts or whatever, that radio was the original entertainment medium, right? And now it's kind of, the pendulum has swung back and people are kind of coming back to this as they want to listen to things. It's not always watching. It's not always their phones. Right. Yeah. Like even, you know, what you ladies do when you had Ross Matthews on, yeah. he's so entertaining and the nicest guy. It was really a thrill hearing him wax poetic about being a new resident on Long Island like that. That to me really makes my heart sing that he enjoys Long Island so much. He's such a good guy. And so you really have a great opportunity to inform people in a, a shorter amount of time because everyone's so busy. Mm -hmm. So that's really the plus of what you do. You, know, you can get home online, listen or watch the podcast, and um, you're informed and entertained at the same time. So yeah, things have definitely changed. 
And I think there's room for everybody. I love that. And we love you so much. Yes, I, I Lisa, honestly, we love you. when we heard that you were a hot tea and I, I just, I couldn't believe it. I, I was like, I felt like, like is we this just, a real, I, it's tea? really, it's really amazing <laughs> that we're reaching people like you and long Islanders and that we're doing, you know, that's, that's our goal. So before we leave, cause I know you've got to go to work. Um, what are your favorite places on long Island and what do you want people to know about long Island? Oh, wow. That's such a, <laughs> that's such a tough question. What are the, my favorite places? Uh, Sag Harbor is, I'd say, number one. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been going there before it was discovered. You know, I used to go there and Billy Joel would be working on his motorcycles in his garage and I would just stop in and say hello. Or, you know, you see a lot of celebrities who live out there and I love that it's more of a boating town. Mm -hmm. I'd say um, Sag Harbor, I love the wineries. Uh, my sister works uh, in Manhasset at the Americana, I so love I love. Oh, yes. I feel like I'm I'm in uh, I don't know Palm Beach, Florida, yes. when I go to Wild. visit her. Exactly. Where right? does she work? Where does she? Which store? She works at Hirschleifers. Okay, okay. I loved. We we learned it was Cipollini, not Cipollini, recently. So mm -hmm. Cipollini. Yeah, I think it's the we've eaten there. I've eaten there. Love it. Um, also. Um, what else? Where does my friend like? I'm just to have been discovering like Northport. So oh, cute, cute little town. Delvino, Fort Salong, Fort Salonga. Yep, yep. You got to go to right. Arlo oh. Kitchen. Yes. Oh, so Oyster good. Bay, Glen Love. Cove. So like many good places. It's so many like little nooks and cranny crannies along the waterfront or along the sound that uh, it's charming. You live there, you feel like. Uh, you know, you're on a movie set. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so beautiful. It's true. It's so <laughs> true. Well, we adore you. And next time you come, you got to call Sharon and I, because then we'll meet you wherever. We'll go, we'll go to our favorite places and hang out. Have a glass of wine with you. I want to get I want to get all your tea yeah. about celebrities. We'll have to have you back on and, and tell you can tell us the craziest stories on the well, red carpet. I can tell you real quick before okay. we go. Okay. Is that when Bradley Cooper used to come up to the Howard Stern show, he was dressed like he was hiking in uh, New Paltz. Like you would never know that it was the movie star Bradley Cooper. Wow. Baseball cap, hiking boots, jeans, very nice. You know, the A-listers were really the nicest ones. They didn't have to prove anything to anyone, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that was, that always like made me laugh. Like, wow, that's Bradley Cooper. And then he would just leave and I, no one would recognize him. Wow. Are you going to give us the tea on who wasn't the nicest? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to have to think about that. I'm sure there are some. Somebody, <laughs> I'm sure. somebody that I'm surprised sure you. you that you thought would be nice and then wasn't. I hear oh, uh, wow. you hear about that a lot. People, Michael deals with celebrities all the time and you expect people to be like, they come off as so like, I've heard that about, you know, pe like cooking people or, mm -hmm. like, you know, people that have cooking shows, they come off as so sweet and then they're really not that nice. Well, um, the Howard Stern mega fans, um, were all so nice. They were so appreciative of being on the show. And Ike Barinholtz, who's a huge Howard Stern fan, he's on the champions, the Jeopardy champions um, round. Oh, wow. Not celebrity. Yeah. He's, they, they put him in the regular round. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. So he's really smart. Yeah, smart people do listen yeah. to to Howard Stern and you guys. Lisa, we'll have to have you back anytime. And when you're back on Long Island, give us a call and we'll come see you in your studio in the city. Oh, yeah, the, you have an open invitation. And oh. let me know about the Long Island Hall of Fame. Yeah, we I'll will. take I'll it. Yes, awesome. we're on it. Now we're on a mission. Yes. Thank you so right. much for listening and for everything Thanks. you've done. And congratulations on an incredible career. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you so much. Have a great week. You Bye. Too. Bye. Okay, Lisa G totally gets what it's like to be a Long Islander and um, and to be a New Yorker. And I loved how much she loved the show. She's I love a hot that tea. she's such a hot tea fan. I mean, I, I don't when even know she reached how, out to us, so cool. we were like, this can't be. This, I was like, this is not her. fake news. <laughs> exactly. I was like, spam. So cool. Um, she's actually, an, she has a book. Yeah. Uh, I was, it's her memoir. Yeah. It's called Sex, Lies, and Cookies. I mean, who doesn't want to read that? Right. Sex, Lies, and Cookies. Uh, I'm going to read it, but we're also going to put that on our Amazon shop page because we have a whole book section. Yes. So make sure you go to amazon.com slash shop slash discover Long Island. And um, you can buy Lisa G's book, Sex, Lies, and Cookies. I love it. I can't which, wait to read it. I mean, uh, how can you not want to read that? Exactly. She's so awesome. I know. And just like a amount of stories that she probably has. 
of all all the celebrities and I just know, like everything that she's experienced I in her career. I, I know we should have asked her more about that. Yeah. Although I don't want to, I never want to put somebody in a like situation where they feel like they have to say something they're not comfortable. Yeah. But I feel like we'll when, next time she comes, we'll take her out for drinks. We'll get all the tea from all Lisa. The tea. Uh, okay. So speaking of tea, mm-hmm. our uh, Long Island tea taste of the week. Yes, this smells delicious. I know. I know. And, uh, My I'm stomach's starving. like grunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our taste of the week is corned beef egg rolls from the tap room. Uh, the tap room has multiple locations. There's one in Bayshore, Farmingdale, Rockville Center, Jericho, Massapequa Park, Patchogue, and more are coming soon. They have live music every weekend at most locations. It's March, meaning it's St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. Is and this coming up. Is, I can't. So that's like one of my favorite holidays, St. Patrick's Day. Really? Did you know that about me? No. I love it. Because... <laughs> You like to get pinched yep. in your <laughs> she... <laughs> I, know. I don't know what. You see, if you're not wearing green, you get pinched. Cause kiss me, I'm Irish. I don't kiss, know. Are you Irish? <laughs> yeah. Are, are you really? Funny enough, yeah. And we did this whole DNA test. And I, my dad always said that we were. We never believed him and like whatever. But we are like 10%. Funny enough, Dan is like 30%. And oh. we had no idea. Oh my gosh! Yeah, okay, so you guys get a big celebration. Yeah, I just love it. It's I think it's more of like um nostalgia for me, you know. Well, let me tell you. Let's talk about this because I we, there's a bunch of stuff. There is a lot of Irish community on Long Island oh, yeah. because yeah. every single downtown has like a St. Parade. Patrick's Day. It's crazy, <laughs> and they start at the very beginning of March and go all the way yeah, through. Yeah, mine's this weekend. Is like, it really? I can't wait to go. Um, yeah, it is. I don't know why. Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Ellis Island, yeah. immigration, a yeah. lot of the Irish and Italian community. That's what I love about Long Island. We're like this melting pot of, of all the these world. different exactly. ethnicities and culture. It's awesome. Exactly. All right. So back to the tap room real quick because we got to eat these. These are delicious. Um, what are they called? Corned beef egg rolls and from the tap room. Yeah, they're stuffed with corned beef, shredded carrots, and green cabbage. Michael was like, these are delicious. Mm-hmm. Michael, you had them? Yeah, so I went there and I got content for our socials, and uh, Phil was great. They, you know, I went to the Farmingdale location, which has two floors, so mm. it's great, especially for the St. Patrick's Day parade. They're going to have a huge celebration there. But yeah, the um, they have a whole like new menu coming in the spring, which is really exciting. And this one right here is just the corned beef egg rolls, mm. and then they also have um, a sandwich that has corned beef. They mm. have a lot of different Irish themed for the month um, of March, right? Yeah, for yeah. the month of March. I've never heard of corned beef egg rolls before, but these look good. These and you know what so I like about them is they, some of those giant corned beef sandwiches, this actually looks like, you know, edible. Like you can, you can accomplish it. Yeah. It's some not going to be like, like overbearing. Over. Yeah. Right. And yeah. this is like, you feel like I can, I can attack that. Yeah. Top tier. Top tier. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, Coming from Michael, he's had it. So we're going to eat it afterwards, but. The tap room is a um, really big partner of ours. They just uh, yeah. signed on for brand partnership, which is awesome. And they have catering available. Takeout and delivery is also available on Uber Eats. And you can earn rewards through their new app. Oh, cool. Um, and more importantly for you, Hot Teas, the tap room is offering you uh, 10% off your entire first order online at taproomofny.com. Uh, and if you type in the code LIT10, you get 10% off. That's awesome. And all will additionally receive $5 credit when they t- uh, when they order. Again, that's the tap room of ny.com. And the code is LIT10 for 10% off and additional $5 credit when you order. I mean, that's awesome. That's amazing. And you got to get these because uh, Sharon and I are going to devour these. You have to watch our TikTok mm-hmm. if you want to see us uh, very not gracefully. <laughs> eat the things that Michael makes us eat afterwards. Right? We never, we, we ne- don't like to do it live on the no, show. No, can't watch, can't do it here because mm-hmm. then it's like all in your teeth and you can't, and you're like, chill. I was watching the today show or no, it was Saturday night live and they were trying to do a skit and they, one person took like a small bite while he was trying to talk and literally choked. Oh man. And you're just like, you know, so yeah. we don't do it nope. live, but if you want to try to watch us, it's really kind of hilarious because we, <laughs> It's very not graceful, right? Exactly. Even that chocolate strawberry from uh, Celestial Treats with the, um, the with shot. the injection of mm-hmm. the shot, I that went everywhere. <laughs> it was embarrassing. It's on TikTok if you want to see it. But um, but back to the St. Patrick's Day parades on Long Island. Yes, March seventeenth, uh, Wantaw's fourth annual St. Patrick's Day parade, Patchog Village, and Glen Cove is their thirty sixth annual parade. Yeah, and then so those are just three just on March seventeenth. By the way, right? Then then the celebration continues long after long after it's before and after, and then the twenty fourth is 
Montauk's 62nd annual parade, 60, by the way. I've been, that's like. That's huge. That's huge. Huge. It's like New York City or Montauk. Oh, like, really? It's, oh, oh, it's oh. huge. And then Ronkonkoma has a 34th annual uh, parade and Babylon Village. Yeah. Okay. So uh, second and then 24th. That's so cute. So, and then. Uh, the, March 30th, yeah. James, Jamesport. I mean, the, the, hey, the festivities continue. There's literally continue. parades every <laughs> single weekend. So also you should make sure if you're trying to go anywhere on any weekend that you know. Yeah. So that you're not stuck in parade traffic somewhere. Right. right. Whatever, so whatever village you're in. They block it out. Yeah. Because the Long Islanders, we love ourselves a St. Patrick's Day parade. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um well, this weekend on Long Island, uh, oh, Hicks Nursery's 34th annual flower and garden show is all weekend. And uh, Saturday, the March 16th, is the Rhythm of the Dance at Stoller Center. And, ooh, barrel tastings at Pindar Vineyards. That's good. That's so fun. And then Sunday, March 17th, a new show at Vanderbilt Planetarium for Eclipse on April 5th. Have you been seeing, like, all these articles about where to where to view the eclipse and things like that? It's just insane. No. Uh, it's April <laughs> April, April 5th. April 5th, April 8th, April 6th. Around there. Uh, it's anywhere. It's in April. It's not coming across Long Island. No. So I have not been paying attention to it. But it is in upstate New York because uh, our colleagues there have been planning on this eclipse for like years. Right. And it's sold out. It's, it's wildly sold I out. I can't so imagine. It's going to be crazy. And I'm just I'm just hoping for their sake, for their sake, like good weather. Right. Imagine exactly. you go and it's like cloudy and you're you like, you can't mm. see. Well, that's what a lot of people talk about. They're like, yeah. And then it's going to gonna be cloudy. Yeah. I know. Um, okay. So... Um, I just, we had a huge show, but I wanted to talk to you about a couple of other things that happened. Some celebrity before we wrap sure. up the show. Um, okay. So, oh, first of all, I have, we have a big announcement. Um, if you haven't, if, if you're a Long Islander and you watch News 12 and okay. you haven't seen it already. Right. We're, Discover Long Island is like all over News 12. <laughs> we're everywhere. It's crazy. It's, it's, so we're now the uh, sponsors of the new East End show, yes. which is on the weekend. And so then they tease that all week. And Bree has a segment, uh, the Long Island 90 Second Spotlight, I which is it. awesome. And then at the end of each one is what to do, things to do this weekend. It's like our TikTok that we put out, right. things to do this weekend that Michael puts together. It's awesome. But it's on News 12. It's awesome. They're like, we're like providing information to News 12. I love it. We're, our teams are so gelling with them. It's a great partnership. It is a great partnership. And then all of our commercials, our belong videos, our app video, our app commercials. Yeah. We're like, it's, it's wild. It is. How I much get. we're all over News 12. It's awesome. I just can't get over like all the content that we're doing. It's just, I, every time you think we we're like, oh my God, we have so much content and then boom, there's more. Yes, there is more. Um, and but real, real quick before celebrity, it's also women's month. Yes. It's, it's, it's Irish month, but it's also women's month. And, um, there is a, a local woman that I was seeing, I was watching it. She's on national news mm -hmm. and, but she's from Greenport. She's a long Island uh, girl. And, um, uh, her Instagram is Cole Brower ocean racing. Um, B R A U E R C O L E Cole Brower ocean racing. And she's 29 years old. She's from Greenport, long Island. She's the youngest and only woman to do what Michael, what is it? Cole Bauer makes history as the first American woman to race solo around the world. She's racing like this sailboat. I was just going to say sail racing. It's a sailboat crazy. racing around the world. And she's doing it as part of like a competition. But it, in the competition, she's the youngest participant of everyone. Wow. And she's also the only woman. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Incredible. And she's from Greenport. That's amazing. So, Long Island repping. Yeah. So <laughs> follow at Cole Brower, B-R-A-U-E-R, -E Ocean Racing on Instagram. And let's all go on there and let her know we're rooting for her. Absolutely. I love it. I so, love that. So exciting. And then um, not Long Island related, okay. but just because of Women's Month, mm -hmm. I just wanted to give a shout out to Caitlin Clark. Uh, another athlete, she's that Iowa basketball player. Mm -hmm. uh, she is an all-time scoring record for uh, NCAA women's basketball wow. from Iowa. And um, she first was the all-time female scoring record, but last weekend she surpassed even the men. Wow. So she's the all-time scoring record holder for NCAA basketball for men and and women. Oh my gosh. So cheers Incredible. to Caitlin Clark. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Girl power. Girl power. I love it. Right. I was like super excited about it. Uh, do you have any celebrity? No, I was just wondering if you have an update on Kate. No, Caitlin, uh, or Kate Middleton. Um, so she was seen yeah. over the weekend. Oh, out? So she was spotted. Okay. It was a big deal. All right. Um, she was spotted with her mom. So she's a, 
she's okay. Okay, good. So as long as she's okay. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know. It's not, it's not our business. I was just like, but apparently I'm not the only one. Cause it was like all over the news. Like, yeah. Where everybody's like, Kate what's Middleton? happening? Yeah. So yeah, that was one thing. Um, a couple of other things. Did you finish love is blind? No. <gasps> okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm through, I'm caught up. I'm at the resort. The, okay. Oh my God, girl. You got some catching up to do. I know, I know, I know. Love is Blind is awesome. Um, so I'm caught up. So except the finale is like, was last night, I think. And I can't watch it because Tegan is in Rochester right now at the, at the New York State DECA competition. Mm-hmm. So I can't watch it without her. Right, no. She would riot. Oh, yes. And we watch it together. Yeah. You can't watch the finale. Have you? Um, uh, oh, real quick before you say that. So Tegan's at DECA. Do you know what DECA is? It's like kind no. of a business... They do role playing. It's like, it's, is it like, um, uh, I don't exactly know what it is cause I've never done it, but it's like a business competition. Right. And I feel like it's like training them to correct, uh, be in the world. Yeah. <laughs> in the working them world. To, <laughs> so she made it to the States championship. Awesome. And then she's there in the, in the top five winners of the whole state, I guess they make it to the nationals. Um, do you know what her business topic is? What? tourism and hospitality. <gasps> I, I, well, I feel like it's a, a, got a focus on ho- hospitality and business. I don't know. I mean, I think she's the, her and her partner are the only ones. And she was complaining, like there was no like guidebook to tourism and hospitality. I'm like, and she wouldn't do the role. They do like role playing and uh, she wouldn't do it with me. She's like, also, please don't call it role playing. <laughs> I'm like, but that's what it's called. I don't know what to tell you. Um, you can call it like mock. Yeah. But then they call it role playing in the, in the competition. So I'm like, see, um, but no, she just called me afterwards. She's like, uh, I said the dumbest thing what over and say? over again. Oh, <laughs> they gave say? her the scenario. Like you're at a hotel and you've had a, you have a huge group of people there. Yeah. You're supposed to have this artisanal. I, I was getting Sharon vibes. Cause she's like artisanal, <laughs> uh, pizza. And I'm like, that's uh, artisanal. It's fine. <laughs> and, and you're supposed to have this pizza. And then, you know, your kitchen catches fire. How do you address it? Oh, um, that's hard, right? That's, That's hard. a hard thing, yeah. right? So anyway, she was like, yeah, she's like, I sounded dumb, but it's good experience. Yeah, absolutely. But I had to tell you, like, so I couldn't watch Love is Blind because she's at the DECA competition. I love that. Oh, yeah. I'm and she's at Long Island UN. Next, next, this is the great thing about Long Island schools is that next week she'll be at Model UN in the city oh, that's crazy. with kids from around the world. I mean, this, the, the opportunities that the kids in our schools have are just like mind blowing. Um, I know. It's mind blowing. It's awesome. Love Long Island. Um, okay. I have one more thing to say for celebrity. I don't even know if you will get this. Um, and I probably should have my TikTok queued up for this, but, um, so because we're talking about DJs and we had Lisa G on, yes. I thought it might be appropriate to say, um, guess who is now on TikTok? And I'm, of course I'm going to have bad coverage. Um, do you remember Delilah? Of course. <laughs> of course. No, you're not going to know who I'm talking night. about. Oh, my God. Uh, Delilah. She's on TikTok. Are oh you kidding me? Oh, my God. I died. Ugh. She's like, I want to play. I've got to find the TikTok. Oh, here it is. Okay, ready? I'm going to play it so you'll know. Here she is. Hey, it's Delilah. Yep. The woman who's been with you on the radio for years. And years and years and years <laughs> oh, I love playing your request and your dedications. And I'm always, always looking for new ways to connect with you. And that is why I am now here on TikTok. Yes. I, I love am it. here so, for that. Me too. So if you want to follow Delilah, and if you don't know Delilah, um, I'll tell you in a minute, but it's uh, her TikTok is at Radio Delilah, D E L I L I A. So for those of you that remember, like Lisa G was talking about, so people would, she was national radio mm-hmm. and people would call in and then you would dedicate songs. Yeah. And she, and they I, would tell and she had the stories. voice. She, she had the voice. Yeah. Yes. They would tell stories. Was, like, like on how they, or why that song was so important to them. It was just such, it's, I'm, I think it's still on. No? I don't think so. Okay. I don't, because she's, she, I remember during like, the holidays hearing it and I was she'd like be bowling. Like, <laughs> she'd be like, has it been a tough week? Yeah. Do you oh, need? I'm I'm here now. Let's, do you need that bubble bath? Yeah, we're gonna pour a glass light? of wine, and the next hour we're gonna talk <laughs> about love, and we're gonna share some great stories. Oh my gosh! And your dream, your dream as like a teenage girl mm-hmm. or a single girl was that somebody would dedicate a song to you. Yes. No one ever did. No. 
no, no, never no, did. No, 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 no. <laughs> but like, I was like, oh my God. Delilah. I love it. Uh, so more to come on that. And that's my tidbit of the day, but I love it. What a great show yes. about radio podcasts, wonderful Long Island marches, chock full with so much stuff. So much. Um, so many great things. So make sure you're leaving us a five-star review and you're going on all of our uh, channels. We've got some really cool remotes coming up. I'm so excited. We're going to be remote, but um, and more celebrity guests and all of those things. Tune in and we'll see you next week. See you next week. The Long Island Tea Podcast is brought to you by Discover Long Island. For exclusive access to contests and promotions, follow the Long Island Tea Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And for questions, comments, and collaborative inquiries, email spillthetea at discoverlongisland.com. <laughs>